What's going on guys? We're at the access point of a canoe trip we're doing this weekend and it's unlike any access point we've ever done before. We're in Nova Scotia and it's a Labor Day long weekend and we're going to be doing a route that we've heard a lot about. The Shubenacadie River is a famous waterway in Nova Scotia because of its rich history of being an important link from the open Atlantic Ocean to the Bay of Fundy. For thousands of years, Mi'kmaq First Nations would use this river to travel from their summer camps on the shores of what is now Halifax and Dartmouth to their winter camps in the forested interior of the Bay of Fundy. When the British settled over 200 years ago, the river was modified into a canal with a nine lock system to allow larger freight to be shipped across what is now Nova Scotia. The name Shubenakadi was a mispronunciation of the traditional Mi'kmaq name Sabaganagadik, meaning where the ground nuts grow. Today, the waterway is a one of a kind route for recreation, history, and nature. And to get the full experience, we're going to attempt to paddle the full 112 kilometers from Halifax all the way down to Maitland on the Bay of Fundy. On our route, we're going to have to cross the Halifax Harbour, portage through downtown Dartmouth, lake hop our way to the height of land and into Grand Lake, and meander our way through the muddy, tidal influenced waters of the Minas Basin and try not to get flushed away by the infamous tidal bore. This is our attempt to do the full Shubenacadie crossing. All right, so what's the first thing we're gonna do? Cross the harbor and Cross the harbor? Dive. Yeah, we're gonna keep her between the ditches. Keep her between the mustard and mayo. Yeah. Hey, everybody at home. We're all ready to go. He's got a mask this time. Nice to see you. You, I can't, not... you can't see me smoking. Put her side. In my mind, they were right here on the canoe, but in reality, they were in the back. All right, guys, we're in the Halifax Harbor. It's official, we've started this trip. It's three o'clock on the Friday. We have until two o'clock on Monday to make it to Maitland before getting washed away by the tidal bore. We're about six kilometers to Dartmouth. Okay, so on the left side of the canoe is where our power comes from in Halifax. On the right side of our canoe is Canada's newest Arctic offshore patrol vessel currently being built at the Irving Shipyards. We have made it across the Halifax Harbour. We've entered Dartmouth and now we're just preparing ourselves for this kilometer long urban portage.
Might be a sneak route. What do you think here? Those rocks up there? What yeah. Do? Drag her up. <laughs> if I hold it, you can spider monkey up and we'll just drag it. So we have made it to Dartmouth. We took a, a pretty weird route to get up. We followed the river as far as we could. Time to start the portage. Need a spotter? I'm gonna get some reactions. Thanks. <laughs> We've had a few people wish us luck on this walk. Pretty cool. This has got some, some. Uh, there's some commotion in the social media here. I was on Global News talking about this trip and uh, CBC Radio this morning. So there is some, there is some interest in it. Hey Noah, if they wish us luck. Do you think we're gonna need it? I think so. We're about to enter Sullivan's Pond, which was man-made during the building of the canal system to stagger the, the elevation drop between the ocean and the first lake. Circumferential highway. One more time. The circumf. Oh now, it, now it's in my head. <laughs> so this is called the circumferential highway because it goes around Dartmouth, as in it, it goes around the circumference of Dartmouth. Say it again for the folks. No. <laughs> so we've made it to Micmac Lake. We met up with Chris from A for Adventure. He was telling us about the route that they did a few years back, where their friend swam the entire Shuby Canal system over seven days. That is pretty epic. So he was giving us a rundown of what we can expect. Pretty much a lot of distance and a lot of different variables in terms of the tide and all the pond hopping we're about to do. But we might stop at a gas station or something just for a, a quick snack.
Oh man, this is it. Pretty luxury right here. You don't often get fresh cold beer on a canoe trip, so pretty happy about that. Let alone craft cold beer. It's true, it's true, yeah. Sometimes you might get uh, fresh Coors Light or something, but. Yeah, so is. <laughs> Well, I think it's great, man. Why, like, that? Yeah. We're just walking behind some crates in the forest to have some beer. <laughs> yeah, it's like being 16 again. <laughs> you gotta be careful. Oh, sweet. Hey, cheers, boys. Cheers. Mm. That's a good Friday beer. Delicious. It's really good, isn't it? Oh, my goodness. I don't feel bad about drinking an apricot wand at all. So we just got to Shuby Park, and we're taking the canal around it, where we might have to go up and around a couple of locks here. Back in the day, they did dig this out about eight feet deep, so it should be deep enough for us to paddle, but we're about to, we're gonna hit a, a lock eventually, so we'll have to portage around. Hopefully, we'll be doing more paddling than portaging in this section. This is the only lock system in the world where they tried two different techniques for, for sidewalls. On the left, there's rubble stone and wood, and on the right, it's cut granite. Looking at it now, 200 years after it was built, the cut granite side seems like it is in better shape than the, the rubble and wood side. Nobody wanted to carry the decrepit beer box anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it was your idea. We all said don't put it under the seat. <laughs> that must be that, which would be lock three. Yeah. It's calling for one more portage through this. So Another lock over. portage? I don't know if it's a lock or not. It's not shown as a lock on here, but. A lock four will probably be between uh, but William and Charles. I don't know exactly. I might get a little tippy there. Worth <laughs> hey buddy. I don't know what it is with all these all these drakes are eclipsed. Like they don't have their full plumage. I was thinking the exact same. Shubenacadie Canal. No, no exit. exit. That's wrong. No exit. <laughs> no one ever talks about the Swedish coming to settle this land. All right, folks, we've made it to Lake Charles, which is known as the height of land here in Nova Scotia. On the north side, it flows to the north, and on the south side, it flows down to the Halifax Harbor to the south. So very interesting here. It's not technically a height of land because it's a, a lake, so it's a, a height of water, I guess you can call it. But first big milestone of the trip. We have about an hour of light left, so perfect timing. There is not really much camping here on Lake Charles but we're making something work. We found a spot. There's a couple tent pads here for us. Not perfectly flat, but they're gonna work for us. Interesting thing is there's an old fire pit here. Very old. Like it's, it hasn't been used for years.
Morning guys. It's gonna be a hot one today. The sun just came up and it's already pretty strong. We're gonna be going past Grand Lake today. We're gonna be going as far as we can, but we wanna go at least about 10K past Grand Lake to make our next day a little less aggressive regarding distance we have to cover. It's gonna be getting up to about 27 degrees today and that is before the humid X. So it's gonna be a really, really hot day. We'll probably need some sunscreen. Some uh, bacon on your left, and uh, going for some scrambled eggs here. Breakfast of champions. You put this together pretty quickly. I know, we don't have time to mess around, so we gotta get her going so we can get on the water. Yeah. Did she sleep in the tent with you or was she out? Uh, she started in there for, and then she left at some point. Probably pretty cozy in there with the two of you and the dog. Yeah, were you all right in there, Jeff? I was uh, not flat. I wasn't flat, no, but I was, uh, it was good. It was all right. Well, it was okay. It's just continuously degrading. Well, it was good. Yeah. It was all right. Well, it was okay. It sucked. Guess <laughs> you're not fit now? I don't know. I think we, uh, there's a couple more beer in there than there was before. Potentially be long. Depends on how the locks are. P2, 3, and 4. Hopefully there's water. We're hoping for a little bit of water in the canal part, right? Oh, and if not, we'd be dragging the entire thing? I'm not sure. Because there are portages, but what are they mark? P1, or P2, 3, and 4? So hopefully we've got some water. And how long is Grand Lake that we're going to be paddling on for? Jeez. Uh, Six, seven k. Is that it? Okay. Well, half of Yeah, you're right. Okay. We're not doing the whole thing. That's so right. So. Shubanaka de Grand. Be curious though, because we had a, a marked portage yesterday that we ended up paddling right through. True, so. true. So 24.925. Yeah, it's about nine, nine k, because it's 25 at the lock and 34 at the uh, Oakfield Park, and then we hit the uh, hit the river. I say we're good to the tidal board. Did you just use that in a sentence? I did. Yeah. Wow. The old spider monkey technique. Oh boy, look out. So we got to a section that got really, really dry. Luckily, there is a portage around it. This year in Nova Scotia, we're having a seasonably low water year. It's been so dry and hot, the water is so low. We get to the next bridge. I don't even see any water in there, it's just all rocks. We're gonna just keep walking up this path and eventually find some water to paddle in. But it is bone dry. So far our team still feels good. Morale is high. Other than the hot weather today, that's gonna be a, a tester, but we're all comfortable with the distances we have to do and the progress that needs to be done each day. So I keep moving forward, bouncing our way up to Grand Lake.
Is this old Krill here? I think so. Howdy! So we just arrived at Old Creel, which is a uh, canoe and kayak shop here in Waverly. Hey folks, thanks for stopping by Old Creel. We're on the Shubenacadie Canal here and sell canoes and kayaks and all things paddle sports as well as automotive racks. So some of the brands we carry are uh, the Delta Kayaks, which are made in Maple Ridge, BC. They're a thermoformed ABS, which is a very light and uh, durable plastic that uh, people love to paddle. They have great uh, characteristics on the water and their aesthetic is nice and fully featured with the uh, day pods, easy to use hatches. We're uh, also uh, fully stocked in paddles and, uh, and other equipment. For canoes, we also carry a skiff and a Nova Craft. Most of you wouldn't need any introduction to the skiff boats having uh, watched them go across Labrador and uh, the Novacraft boats have uh, equally uh, rugged boats that uh, have made some wild treks uh, through Adam Schultz and some other Canadian adventurers. Do you have a favorite model that you like canoeing with? Uh, I like a 15 foot canoe and I do like a little bit more freeboard for moving water. And so in Nova Scotia, we don't have as large a watersheds as some other areas across the country. And so a 15 foot boat in my mind is very agile and uh, well at home in our rivers. Yeah. See you guys. We've just reached the bustling town of Fall River. Each one of these bridges always seems to be a little shallow underneath. Right behind you. So interesting section here. The river originally was on this side, but now it's bone dry and there's actually plants growing at the bottom. Very, very old. A lot of history on this route. So we are walking the final stretches coming into Grand Lake. Really hope this isn't what we have in store for the 47 kilometers leaving Grand Lake, because she is very shallow. We made it to the second milestone of this trip, Grand Lake. We do have a headwind and we're gonna be paddling about 9K before getting back onto the Shuby Canal. I'd say we've done a little less than 20. I think we camped at the 6.5 mark and we're at 25 now, so okay. we're probably, yeah, 19, 18, 19K for the day. Yep. We've gotta go all the way up to the Shubenacadie River. Taking a break, we're filtering some water, having some snacks. We expect to be out there for a couple hours, so 
the last big push for the day and then we'll start dragging back on the small stream. I'd say let's just like pick a point over there. So we're crossing this bay though, yeah? I think let's just cross it, yeah. See the big hump on the opposite shore and then to the right there's that little valley. Just aim for that. This lake is so big that there's a sailboat on there. Yeah, it's pretty big. This lake is so big it's called Grand Lake here in Nova Scotia. It's of its size. To be fair, there's like 40 Grand Lakes in Nova Scotia. But this Two. is this is the grandest of the of the Grand it is, though, yeah. isn't it? I think it's the second biggest lake in Nova Scotia. Rosignol is the biggest. Somebody will correct me on that. So first luck, there is water. Hopefully we can make it through this little spot here. Really we've got, what, 30k of this, and then it's going to switch to tidal, in which case we should have lots of water at high tide. There's going to have to be a transition from that muddy chocolate milk that we're expecting to this like rocky yeah. uh, cottage country river. This is what's known as an engineered spring. There was a problem here on the Shubenacadie River where the next community down Enfield uses the river for their water supply and in low water conditions the water usage of the town was actually dropping the river levels lower than what was tolerable for uh, fish passage. So in order to supplement the water in the river basically what happens is you have Grand Lake up above so what they did was they put this pumping system in and it actually works as a siphon, just like when you siphon, you know, if you were to siphon gas out of a car tank, suck water up out of Grand Lake through this cleared area and put it into this stilling basin, which just kind of kills the energy of the flow coming out of the pipe. And then it runs out and it creates an en engineered spring. And that is meant to offset the water usage of the town of Enfield down below. Big shout out to Gordy B on that one. It is barely deep enough for us to paddle. We are pretty much scraping off the bottom every few paddle strokes. Let's hope this uh, so we can keep going forward and not get stuck. So unfortunately, the farther we go, the more shallow it gets. And it's not consistently shallow. There's these gravel bars and they're lined. So there's like these deep areas and then it's shallow and little shoots where there's aprons of rock. So you can tell in a higher energy environment, like in the spring or even in the uh, winter months with lots of water, it moves all these rocks into these like undulations, which is similar to what you would see with sand on a beach, all those waves. That's what's happening here with these gravel bars with a higher energy system creating those, those waves. So what we're doing now is, I'm walking the shoreline, because another thing is, the heavier your boat is, the harder it is to get over some of these shallow sections. But you can tell, like this area that I'm walking on right now is underwater in the spring. This looks like the remnants of an old lock system here. Real old, about 200 years old actually. Yeah. Man, those are some sexy looking clouds. 
It's like a Cumulo Nimbus Stratus Hybrid. Wow. That's a lot of big words. East Pants Water Tower. smell those burgers? No, it's that house right there. See the smoke? Do you think if we asked really nicely they would bring us down some hamburgers? I think so. It is getting late in the day. The sun's set. And we have less than an hour before it gets dark. We're still in the water. Looking for a place to stay tonight. Not too many options so far with all the uh, the private property that's around us right now. So we end up finding a relatively flat spot. It's very marshy here. It's flat and the sun is set, so this is our spot for tonight. I think it's gonna be a little bit beef flavored. What's that? Because the banks are super, super muddy and no one wants to go back down to the river and get all muddy to get more water. So the the pan washing didn't really happen last night. So we're having pasta flavored coffee. Dude. <laughs> you need a close up of that? <laughs> Conservation. That, water. that is not coffee. That's not the That's coffee. water. <laughs> That's pasta water. Morning guys. We did about 35 kilometers yesterday and at about nine o'clock I was out. I was out like a log. I was, what's the phrase called? What's the phrase called? Out like a lamp? Out like a light. Nine o'clock hit and I was out like a light. It was a combination of how hot it was yesterday with that sun and just all the work we had to do as well. It was 35K, that's a big day. But today, we're gonna to be doing a 42 kilometer day. That's the plan anyways. We wanna line ourselves up properly so tomorrow we can hit the tides going out so we can paddle into the bay without any issues. So 42 kilometers in shallow water, gonna be a tough day. We got up pretty early, it's six o'clock right now. Doesn't look like there's a cloud in the sky. Might be another hot one. You know, they, they need a song after this. Smoke on the water.
So pretty active morning on the river this morning. Uh, we came around a corner and saw two otters and then a beaver. Beavers are pretty cool, but they're not as cool as otters. Otters are huge. They, actually, they honestly look like seals and they're in about three feet of water. Also, along our trip, we've been seeing a ton of mussel shells that are busted open along the, the, um, the river, or along the riverbed. And obviously the otters are up here eating those mussels. And this, they have this entire area all to themselves. So it's just a, it's a buffet for them. Beautiful, beautiful animals. It's a little swampy. It's way better than yesterday. It's, I, I'm, high, I'm quite surprised. I'm happy with the way things are going so far. Knock on wood. I feel pretty good. If we can keep it up, I think we'll be all right. I'm uh, just curious to see what happens downriver to the water levels. For the most part, it's been fairly paddleable. But we'll see what happens as we go downriver. Dave, what's this confluence here? We've arrived at the um, Nine Mile River, East, Count, East Hans County, and uh, joining the Shubenacadie right here. Which is fantastic, because that means we're going to get some more water to paddle in. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. <laughs> it's not the rager that I was hoping for, but we are seeing a little more uh, gravel beds here. This doesn't look like much, but this is the ninth lock on the Shuby Canal. And if we know anything from Nine Locks Brewery, this is the last lock for us, which means we are getting closer to our destination, which is the Bay of Fundy. Dude, this is the biggest set yet. We're going live with the cannon. I definitely gonna grab that. So we are at the point of the trip where we're starting to have conversations about when we should start filling up all our water bottles because we're getting to the point where this water is gonna start turning tidal and start getting salt content in it. And we definitely don't wanna be drinking that. So we have four four liter jugs of water to fill up, two four liter gravity filter sacks and then four liters of Nalgene water. So we're gonna have about 30 liters of water on us. So we're gonna have to spend a I would say an hour at least filling up all these waters before we hit this uh, tidal zone. <laughs> so we pulled over to shore here. The brooks that we were banking on that to have water to fill up on completely dry, but we are at a point where the water looks relatively clean. So we're gonna fill them up and get ready for when we hit the salt water. We're almost done pumping there, Matt. No. <laughs> How close are we? I think we need two, 10 more liters. We got a tailwind though. <laughs> That's why Dave is whispering. Don't let it hear you. So we have reached the transition from fresh water to salt water. We filled up our water about 200 yards upstream of this transition zone without really knowing that. So we got real lucky there. 
But now we're into the, uh, the muddy flats for the rest of this trip. There's a huge cornfield to our left. It would not be that appealing just to paddle if we weren't doing a, a larger trip. But we did see some stripers actually. And we're pretty far up. We're probably about uh, 50 kilometers inland from uh, the Minas Basin. And we saw stripers up here in early September. So I don't know if that's normal. Matt, can you, can you speak on that? Not really, I don't really know. I, I always thought that they uh, they were mainly up in the river in their spawn in the spring, but I know like occasionally they'll come up to the river. I don't know why though. Yeah. I don't uh, I don't have an answer for that one. A couple big ones. Oof. Smell that cattle farm? Yeah, that's some cattle. We've reached a section of the river where there is a pretty significant tide. It looks like the tide has already dropped about two feet where we are and it is still going out. And we're paddling in about a foot to a foot and a half of water. So now it's a matter of how far we can go before this river dries up too much and we can't even paddle. We do not factor this into today's 42 kilometers. So that's a new variable that we're gonna have to deal with. We do have a tailwind though, so we got that. Anything to add to that, Matt? Uh, just keep our heads down and go till we run out of water, see how far we can make it. We've paddled just over 30 kilometers for the day, which is very good so far. It's probably about 3.30, 4 o'clock, so we're getting on. The tide has not turned yet, and there's still enough water to paddle, so all is well in our world. It is kind of strange. So most of the paddling I've done that's long distances, there's always something to paddle towards. Like there's always a change of, of scenery, another lake to get to. But for this, we're looking at two days of just straight, same type of river, just lots of mud and lots of just meandering. So it's definitely a mind game. We're still moving forward, still working towards our 42 kilometers. We're looking at another 12 or so for the day. Possible if those tides don't turn, we don't really know if they will or what's gonna happen there, but we'll keep you updated with that. Bad one. Tell the folks what just happened. So we ran into a couple guys fishing on the bank who were adamant about warning us that the uh, the tidal bore was going to be coming any minute now, which is uh, Bay of Fundy is the highest tides in the world. And when the incoming tide comes in, it actually comes in so fast, it comes in as a wave, which is called the bore. Uh, and I think typically it's only about, it's like a foot high wave. But essentially, once we see that boar coming, our paddling day is gonna be done because we're not gonna be able to paddle against the current. So we'll see, nothing we can do about it. So we'll just keep our heads down and, and keep going till we can't. What, what's our goal if it comes around the corner and we see the tidal boar coming? <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> I think uh, the plan is to get to shore, grab some grass, wait till the boar passes, and then we'll have to pull up and, and we'll just have to camp wherever we're at because it'll be a six hour turnaround before the current switches again, so. <laughs> I think we're still good until this water starts becoming slack water. Like right before, you know, like when the tides shift? Yeah. We got some dark clouds and we got a tidal bore on its way. And we are stuck in the sand. Putting away all the electronics.
you guys are from Nova Scotia, you definitely know where we are right now. Big milestone, Highway 102. The tide shifted drastically. There's a strong current coming right out of this now. Where's this epic wall that the guy promised? Didn't happen. It's a solid current though. We good to go with. Yeah. Yeah. We got the sun, we got some clouds. It just rained on us. The tidal bore passed. It wasn't as boring as we expected, but there was strong current. So we were working the shoreline and now we're actually clipping along at a decent pace. So there you got the shoe bee. The shoe bee keeps going that way. And over here, we have the Stewiak, which means we made it at the confluence, we did the 42 kilometers, and we are done for the day. We had about six kilometers to do once that bore hit, and I think we all thought it would be a lot harder to get upriver than it was, but we followed the shoreline, and there's all these undulations on the shoreline, allowing for these eddies to go back upriver so we're using that to propel ourselves up the shoreline and I think we did six kilometers in what felt like an hour. So we made great time. The sun's still out. We're gonna have some breakfast. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna have some dinner and have some beers that we still have left. And this is the earliest we've got to camp in over the entire trip. So let's take it in. Let's enjoy it. We got the weather for it. Cold though, man. That was one of the coldest experiences ever of my life. Yeah. What do you got there, David? Smoking an IPA. Galaxy Propeller Brewing Co. That's for you, Noah. Hey, long time no see. How are you? What's going on? <laughs> Want to go eat your food? Hey, where'd you go eat your food? Oh. Oh. There you go. You can move those legs.
is that a meal or what? Oh yeah. 900 calories right there. Dollop. Scrape off a piece of nan bread. That's your bite there. Mm-hmm. That's so good. Oh my god. I get the classic shot of Matt eating something. Every video. <laughs> every time. Dave, what time is it? About 4.30 in the morning. Just putting on a pot of water for some coffee. Some more water for our cereal. Pack up, get on the water for six. It's the plan. Why are we getting on the water for six? Mm. We have, uh, high tide is apparently at about 6 a.m. So we're going to make sure we are on the water for that time to catch the outgoing tide, ride it all the way out to the ocean. Good morning. Morning. How are you? Matt, have you ever woken up at 4.30 to go canoeing? No. How do you feel about that? I feel okay, knowing that, you know, we're going to arrive in Maitland and go get a coffee and then go get a shower and warm bed. Come on, Osa, let's go. Oh, there you are. Oh, Ray, she's excited. So we've been muddy in there, eh? Yeah. I don't think we're going to be able to do too much about that. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Nice that the tide's higher than it was yesterday. Not, we don't have to send it down as far. It's more water to ride out. <coughs> yeah. Paddling down this river, where we're expecting a tidal bore, it's dark and it's extremely foggy. You can't even see the shoreline. And the water is like a salty mud. We got totally turned around. And we started paddling upriver and we got mixed up with the with the tidal currents. But um, luckily Matt and Jeff so sure. were the smart ones and thought something was up. So now we're back on track. We are ripping now. We think we're doing 6K an hour? Well, I'd say like 7. 6K you can actually like paddle 
if you had your head down. But I don't think you could paddle this fast on flat water. We have gone about 15 kilometers in two hours. The fog is still pretty thick. We've been trying to stay along the shoreline because we already got turned around once where we started going up river. But we're making good progress. A little disorienting, but we're starting to hear a little moving water in the distance. We think maybe something's on its way. <laughs> Class two. If we hit a big one, have you ever done a brace? We we'll want a brace. <laughs> Hard paddle. Yeah, a good way to stop splash is a back paddle. Back paddle and bracing. That was fun, eh? <laughs> we have made it to South Maitland. Here's the bridge. You can barely see it, but it's there. Very eerie. Jeez. Yeah. Still got a blanket of fog over us. Dave, how far have we gone? 20, 25k? 20-25k? How long have we been on the water for? Two and a half hours. Crushing it. Yeah, that's ridiculous. What's that, like 10, 10k an hour? About 10k an hour. <laughs> yeah. Pretty good. So the Bay of Fundy has the largest tides in the world, and they fluctuate about 42 feet. And the Shuby is one of the rivers that go into the Minas Basin, which is part of the Bay of Fundy. And as the tides come up, all that tide flushes into this narrowed river and creates these monster tidal bores that get pushed about 30, we're seeing influence maybe 40 to 50 kilometers up river, which is pretty crazy to think that that's all tide influenced. But now we're getting to the mouth. We have the tide on our side. We've been going at a record pace. We've been going at like 10 kilometers an hour. Ridiculous. So we're gonna be off the river by, by breakfast time. Maybe we're checking that map just to kind of get our bearings. Yeah. Go, because like soon we're just going to be standing on mud. Yeah, we gotta go. We gotta go like now. Essentially, the tide is so low, it's only a couple inches deep and it's still going out. So, we got a like motor here. Oh, 
me, we're getting deep enough here. Oh, there we go. I've ever seen. Yeah. To our left, that's all just sand, eh? So, so which way is Maitland? West. Right over that sandbar. So we find a channel, and if we can't find a channel, we just portage over the sandbar. Unless we want to go to Churro for some KFC. But I'll look down from my tall window Down to the busy street of mine I couldn't hear a sound that was louder Than the one inside my mind We have made it to Maitland. Instead of trees, the kids It's official. Public the wharf the is right there. We're about to call this trip Their complete. Land. Where are you going? Good job, man. What do you think of the last section there? <laughs> we went a little astray. Turned a kilometer paddle into a three kilometer paddle, but other than that, it's pretty good. We didn't get swept it's back in, and that's the main thing. We didn't get flushed. Way to neutralize my eyes from seeing the daily weary faces for an hour that I'm alive. Still, I'm playing out for Nichols. I keep him in a wooden drawer so that one day. I can't afford her diamonds and pearls But when I hold her head I understand that she's worth a whole lot more than I could ever afford In my room there's no Mistaken, I have the world upon my lap, and with my steel guitar, I slide it endless dreams.